Hey, peace out. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are starting chapter five, which is probability. So this is just an intro to probability um, to some certain vocabulary things that you're going to need. Um, and yeah, we're going to run a few simulations, stuff like that, a couple things on your calculator. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is what a simulation is and why we would even care about a simulation. So we're going to pretend that you go to a store with um, six of your best friends. So there are seven of you total. Seven people. Sorry. Hopefully you can read that. Okay, there's seven people and the grocery store has decided that they're going to do like um, or the soda company has decided that they're going to do um, a special uh, giveaway kind of thing where they claim that one in six uh, bottles wins. Okay? Um, and you win, I don't know, a new puppy or something. Yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> so you've got, you know, a puppy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a great artist. Um, okay, so you have seven friends. Each person buys a bottle. Um, and you assume that one in six is going to win, and so you're thinking that probably at least one person wins. Um, and everybody opens their bottles. Bottle one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, because there's seven friends, and not a single one of you wins. And so you are shocked and angry, and you go to the store manager and you say, hey, you claim that one in six wins. And there are seven of us, and nobody won. Um, and you decide to use a simulation to figure out what is the probability that, um, or the likelihood, um, that you could get seven bottles and have none of them be winners. So we've got one six wins. You buy seven and not a single winner. We want to know how likely this is. So you're a genius statistician, and because you love probability, you just happen to carry um, a dice with you, a die with you everywhere you go. Um, and so what you decide to do is show the store, uh, attendant that you should have won. You probably would be kicked out at this point if this were a real scenario, but anyways, so you have a die, right? Um, and there are six options on a normal die. And so um, and if it's a fair die, right, the probability of each um, number being selected is the same. So um, if we know that one in six wins, then we should assign a number from the die to represent a winner and then the rest be losers. So let's roll a die and let's assume that a one is a winner because, yay, we like ones, okay? So um, if we assign one to be a winner, um, then everything else is a loser. So we roll the die seven times. Thanks to random.org, I didn't have to actually roll an actual die seven times, but in this case, I randomly rolled a die seven times and I got a one, an another one, and another one. So I got three wins out of six, which is really exciting. Um, and running it once does not count as a simulation because, you know, there's so much variability within one chance event. So we want to do that multiple times, but first we need a way to organize it. So let's use a, like a, I don't know, like a dot plot or something. Okay, here's my dot plot. And basically every single dot is going to be, um, represent seven rolls of the die, which is the seven friends choosing the bottles. So in that particular one, we had three wins um, out of seven. So let's do it again, get some more data. This time we got three again. Add it to the graph. I roll again. I get one winner. And I can repeat this over and over and over again until I get enough data till I'm satisfied that, like, I have a pretty good simulation. So I'm actually going to do it quickly on the calculator. I'll show you how to get random numbers on your calculator. Okay, since I want to do this again and again and again, I'm just going to go to the calculator and have it do run more simulations for me. So I want to go to math and then go over to probability, prob. And then number five is rand int, which means a random integer. Um, and so you can just click five, 
and hit enter, and then you need to tell it your lower bound. So what is the lowest number you want? I'm going one through six, pretend I'm rolling a die. Um, and then, so my lower bound is one, my upper bound is six, because it will use all the integers between one and six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, which are all the numbers that are on a die. And then um, how many, N is how many numbers do I want to pick? I want to pick seven, because there were seven friends, and I hit paste and enter, and I get a set of seven numbers. So I have one more win. I can hit enter again and get a new set of numbers. I get two wins. I get another set, no wins, two wins. Okay, so I'm gonna do this a bunch and then put it on the graph. Okay, so say you did this 40 times. Um, out of the 40 times that I did this, nine times, I got zero out of seven bottles that didn't win. I mean, that did win, right? So no bottles, one. Um, so what you can do with that is nine out of 40, find out approximately what that is as a decimal. Um, and that is your estimated, based on your simulation, your estimated probability of getting a zero um, or anything more extreme. So in, in the event that, um, you know, I don't know, you're always looking for the extreme values. So in this case, there's no more extreme value than zero. Um, but uh, in other simulations, you might be looking for zero and anything to, you know, on the other side of it, anything less than zero or um, anything to the right of something else. So um, it would have been way more surprising if you, if all seven people got winning bottles. So like, because the probability of that happening um, is zero from our simulation. So let's just fill in um, what a simulation is and how to get random number calculators, random numbers in the calculator. Just you have that info and then we'll move on. Okay, so simulations, pretty much a way to model random events that pretty closely lines up with the real world outcomes. Um, so what we actually did was a simulation. Uh, we found that the probability of getting no wins out of seven bottles is about 22.5%. Um, and the actual probability, which can be calculated with math, um, is actually found to be about 28%. So it's not too bad. We modeled the real world situation reasonably well. Um, random numbers in the calculator, math, prob, random, to put your lower bound, your upper bound, number of trials, or the number of random numbers that you want. Okay, definition of probability. So, probability is basically like the likelihood an event is going to happen in the long run um, over essentially an infinite number of trials. Um, and it's notated like that, um, probability of whatever your event is. Um, and then it equals whatever the number is. Um, so probability of any outcome denoted as probability event is always a number between, okay, it's always between zero and one. So if you get a number for your probability that's not between zero and one, you did something wrong. And I'm going to look at you like you're like a crazy person, okay? Because probability, you can't have like a 200% probability of something happening. It just doesn't happen. Okay. Um, it describes the proportion of times that outcome is going to occur in many, 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 many repetitions, um, basically in infinitely many. Um, and, you know, you could also describe it as like, in the long run, you're going to see one out of six die rolls is going to be a one. Um, okay, so then that also leads into the law of large numbers. And basically what the law of large number, numbers says is that if I do a simulation many times, the more times I do it, the closer to the true probability, the true theoretical probability, my simulation's gonna get. So in the bottle example, I only ran it 40 times. If I had ran it 400 times instead, that number would have been closer to the theoretical probability, which is which was the 20, about 28%. Okay, so a lot of large numbers. There's your like formal definition. Uh, if you want to write it down, pause the video, because I'm gonna move on. Okay, so common mistakes, um, actually there's only one, um, but what I, <laughs> please don't do this. So in your calculator, if you have a really, really, really small number or a really, really, really large number, your calculator is gonna say something like the following. So you see, you get a probability result 
that is 2.05821. And you write down the probability of this event occurring is 2.058. Not the case because probability is between 0 and 1. The problem is there's this little e negative 9 thing, um, and that means that it is um, just scientific notation. What that means is it's 2.058 times 10 to the negative 1. So don't mix those up because if you get a probability result that is larger than 1, I'm going to look at you like, really? Come on, person. Come on. Okay, just a couple of real world examples of using probability. Coin toss at a game. Um, what's the probability of getting three heads in a row? What's the probability of rolling die and getting, you know, um, a seven and craps and crapping out and losing all your money? Um, big deals. Um, and then the air, the airline one um, is pretty cool too. So um, airlines have um, an estimate of, of the likelihood of a few people canceling their flights before uh, the flight actually goes. Um, and so what they do is they overbook the flight based on the number of people they expect to cancel, um, which is why around the holidays they always have overbooked flights because um, they overbook and people don't cancel their flights around the holidays. So they just mess up. Probability does not work in that case. Okay, please read the following example. Pause it and read it because I'm not going to waste time reading it. Side note, these things are really delicious. I don't really really even like the ones that are flavored wasabi, but I can't stop eating them. The regular ones are even more delicious. And they're better for you than chips. Okay, so um, conceptually this problem is kind of hard to understand, but basically every single one of those dots represents um, if the true proportion of people who said no is 50%. Um, a simu this is a simulation of um, many of 200 different samples of size 60. Um, so, uh, and this is if the true proportion is in fact 50%. So this, our simulation is kind of you know, symmetric around 50. Okay, so suppose 27 students in the class uh, say no, explain why this result does not give convincing evidence that fewer than half the school students brush their teeth with the water off. Well, 27 out of 60 students, I don't know why this is messing up right now, 27 out of 60 is about 40, actually exactly 45%. Um, so you're getting 45% of the population saying that they don't shut their, their water off, right? So if the true proportion is 50, the likelihood of us getting 45% or less than that, right? Anything, that value or anything more extreme is close to however many dots we have there, which is, I counted them, I think there's about 44 dots in that little area. And that's out of 200 trials, um, which is about 22% of the time this area, remember this is a density curve, so that the probability of that happening is about 22%, um, which isn't really convincing evidence that, um, that the, the mean is different than 50. So B asks if only 18 people out of the 60 say no, um, explain why this result gives strong evidence that fewer than 50% of the school students brush their teeth with the water off. Um, Okay, so 18 students out of 60 um, is about 30%, okay? Um, so 18 out of 60 is 30%, which is over here. And according to our simulation, we had no results. Assuming that the mean is actually 50, we had no results of 0.3 or less. Therefore, we would think that our initial guess that the mean um, or the average number of people who say no is 50%. We think that it's actually probably less than that. Okay, here's the last question. Don't have time to explain it, but I'm gonna write the answers for you. So you should try it first and then read my answers. Make sure you got it right. Okay, 
Uh, there are your answers. Let me know if you have any questions. But um, it's just kind of like run, running simulations with random numbers like we did um, in Chapter 4 with experiments. Okay, bye.